for a student third off. This is a third off of people. We will most focus on adaptive signal, signal processing, adaptive control systems, and adaptive neural networks. The application was based on signal processing and pattern recognition. Yeah, the students Marshall T. Off or Ted Off, born in 1923 in Rochester, New York, graduated in electrical engineering from Rochester Polytechnic Institute in 1958. He received his PhD from Stanford University in 1962. At that time, was, he was a student of uh, Dr. Woodrow and stayed as a research assistant in computer area until 1968. Of joined Intel as manager of application research in 1968, became an Intel fellow in 1980, and remained in this position until 1983. Masha became a consultant in time for independent technical projects. Now we are back in our topic. The first point is what is elements algorithm? Elements algorithm from the full form list mean square. It is just uh, an algorithm that is used. To, uh, to adjust the coefficient of the filter for the purpose of minimizing the error between uh, the expected or desired output and the actual output or calculated output signal. That is general definition <coughs> of the filter case. And what is other line? When you are saying I'm going to speak about the discovery of elements algorithm means you are just going to, to derive the expression of the elements algorithm and to speak about the other line, which is uh, the first step or the first machine that allowed the application of the elements algorithm. Other line, adaptive linear neuron, an adaptive pattern classification machine that has been constructed for the purpose of representing adaptive behavior and artificial learning. In simple, we can just say that other line is a single layer artificial neural network and it is having an important component. Uh, inside it that is called as memory store. By the name we can see memory store by having memory and resistor. Means, first of all the definition of memory store is just a semiconductor and we know from semiconductor is just a device whose connectivity lies between conductor and oscillator. And the good part of this memory store is what? It is able to know or uh, to recover the amount of charge passing through it, and that allows other line to memorize uh, part, the pattern generation, means T pattern or J pattern, we understand what I'm trying to say now. Now, other line construction. We are having uh, <coughs> our input, means N input, X1 to N, we are having the weight, we are having our weight, W1 to Wn, we are having some extra inputs called as bias, it's lower to plus, plus one, the material is there. And what is y? What is the uh, actual output or calculated output that is equal to the sum of the product of uh, each input with its corresponding weight? And the error is just the difference between our desired uh, output with the actual output. This is the meter for the output. We are having here a sigmoid function. Sigmoid just allows us to have plus one or minus one and the as output. Now, how to find the uh, the output or actual output? Actual output, we know that we can we can use uh, matrices to obtain our output because, as seen before, we are having so many inputs. We're having so many weights, and this can be taken as vector. And I also will be what will be a scalar. We're having n, uh, n cross, the input is s cross 1 matrix, and the weight is 1 cross n uh, matrix. And to multiply two matrices, we know the column of the first matrix, the number of the column of the first matrix has to be equal to the number of lines of the second matrix. That's why we are considering the transpose of our input multiplied by our weight. Or we can take the S. Just pass this equation very quick. Very quick. Yeah. The error is just what? It's just the difference between the expected value with the actual value. And that gives us this one. Now, the square error is what? 
We are just squaring what we have obtained as error here. And we can see a minus b square formula will give us a square minus 2ab plus b square. That formula that has been used here. Yeah. And then uh, we have a mean square error. Mean square error is just expected value of the error square that we have shown the previous slide. And that is equal to what expected value of the actual output square minus 2 is expected value of the product of the uh, expected outputs by the transpose of the inputs multiplied by the weight plus uh, the transpose of the weights and the expected value of the correlation of uh, the inputs now in is transpose multiplied by the weight and just we represent here in, in terms of correlation correlation is just uh, P is equal to correlation vector between the desired response and each component of the input. And R, this R here, is that the cross correlation between various inputs to its transpose. And then the definition of a predicted value, a predicted value of a variable calculated as the sum of all possible values, each multiplied by the probability of its occurrence. <coughs> now, our main aim is to obtain the minimum error, means the least error. And to obtain that error, they will give, uh, we are going to use a method that is called steepest descent. Before that, we know that the mean square error is a function of weight. Means we can represent the mean square error in space with respect to weight. If we consider more than two weights, means we are going to have some kind of uh, IPR parabolas. It's a bit difficult for us to represent it. Uh, in space, that's why we just consider two weights we are having W1 and W2. And what does the first descent tell us? The value that is situated, the value of the weight situated at the bottom of the uh, paraboloid is that value that generates the minimum square error. <coughs> now, for ideas to test the sense, we are having this one is the next weight vector is equal to what the present weight vector plus this is the step size multiplied by, uh, by the negative of two gradients. Why negative? Because our aim is to move from this upside to the bottom of the upper parabola. And for that, we have to consider the minus sign. So that the value will keep on decreasing up to the bottom value. As I said, now what is the gradient? The gradient is just the partial derivative of the mean square error with respect to, uh, to the weight. But actually, to give, it was difficult for them to consider all the, uh, the, the, the error of all the weight. What they did, they just, they just consider the error generated by a single pattern. Means instead of using mean square error in the calculation, they have used the error square generated by a single pattern. I'm going to explain what, what is the pattern. I mean, this is a formula. Instead of two gradients, we are having estimated gradient. And estimated gradient is equal to the partial derivative of the error generated by a single pattern square with respect to the weight. And now we know that, I've, seen, I've shown in the previous slide, error is equal to the expected output minus actual output. And we are deriving this expression to obtain this one. As you can see, it was there in the formula. We have derived this one. To the first, the weight gives us minus x. And we are replacing now the value inside our general formula. We have this of expected gradients. We are having this expression. And then it gives us this at the last. <coughs> now, what was that element I'm written? Actually, mathematically, we can represent it as like this means the next value of the weight is equal to the present weight value plus 2 multiplied by the step size and by the error multiplied by the input. And then error is equal to expected value minus the transpose of the input value multiplied by the weight. Now, for the stability, as you know, when we are decreasing 
a deplorable, in a deplorable release. Something will happen, we can escape that bottom of the parabola. For that reason, we have to choose the step size properly. And how to choose it, the value of the step size has to be between 0 